If you're looking for the latest NFL news and rumors, you're in the right place. You're watching NFL Daily by the Chat right Sports. Place here right at Chat place. Sports. <laughs> Not the best start, but hey, sometimes that's what's going to happen. I'm Mitchell Rands. That's Tom Downey. And before we went live today, we did actually have a little bit of an update around the preseason. And, well, the reports are right now that it's been cut in half. You're going to remove week one and week four. This is due to COVID-19 precautions. And we could see a little bit longer of a training camp. But I don't know about you, Tom. I, I kind of like it. Yeah, it's, I mean, I think it's it's not a huge surprise. Like, I mean, we, we've mentioned this for a while now in terms of what was probably going to end up happening for the NFL is that, look, the, the players haven't had their normal offseason of OTAs and workouts and, and all of that. There are some concerns because of that that, well, we don't want to get thrown into games and end up getting hurt, so they're going to try to extend everything, delay it all. So that, that does make quite a bit of sense to me overall. Here's the updated timeline. This is also per Field Yates, by the way. Now, take note on this in, in terms of the timing is that July 28th is still the expected report date for almost all teams in the NFL. Correct. Week one now is, is gone. So the new week one is really week two. Week yep. two is, is the original week three. And week four is canceled. That was supposed to be September 3rd. That's not going to be played. So the games are going to be in the normal week two, week three spots. My suspicion is that they might not necessarily match up the the the, the planned week two, week three games. Maybe they will, and maybe they'll make sure that one team has a home a home game and, and a road game. But it is going to be a shortened preseason. I'm on board with that. It, it just makes sense. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And honestly, if you would have told me a few months ago or even a few years ago that it's only going to be two preseason games, honestly, I'd probably be on board mm -hmm. for it. So let us know here in the votes. Uh, NFL canceled two preseason games. Do you think it was a smart move or – you think it was a dumb move, and one of the reasons why they've canceled it is because of all this COVID stuff. You can see the link below me, chatsports.com slash stay safe. Make sure you guys are staying safe out there. Go get yourself a face covering. I am seeing a lot of S's there in the comment section, Tom, yeah, and I honestly, agree. I totally agree. If you haven't yet, I would say. It's the price. preseason. Yeah. Just don't cancel the real games and people will be fine. Correct. Let's go to the next story here, maybe one of the top ones on today's show, probably the top one. Chris Jones potentially holding out, so he threatened to not play if the Chiefs do not pay him maybe about $20 million a year for a contract extension. Which is a very fair ask. I mean, it, it's an aggressive ask, but yeah. it, is, it is within reason for Chris Jones. Now, there are some, some different leverage points than what you might see, for example, for Dalvin Cook. Chris Jones has accrued four years, so whenever he reaches free agency, he'll be a free agent. He won't yes. be like a free agent or anything like that. He'll be able to reach full-fledged free agency at the same time. When he, he mentioned Lev Bell in his tweet. Which I didn't think was smart, honestly. Well, Lev Bell got towed out in his second tag year. Yeah. Jones is doing it in his first tag year. So if Jones holds out this year, the Chiefs could tag him again at $19 million Sure. If they wanted to. Which would also kind of give Jones closer to what he wants. But if you don't play on the tag, you don't get paid. Correct. Jones, I think, is, is, with asking for $20 million, is reasonable. Isn't he just as good as DeForest Buckner? They're both awesome defensive line. Oh, right? absolutely. And I, exactly. I actually think, though, the reason why this is a little bit more of an issue, and I think it's an issue not just in football, but in, in today's world, I mean, it is so hard to predict what's going to happen this season. And if I'm an NFL team, if I'm a person that just owns a, a business, I don't know if I'm going to want to pay somebody as much as what we've seen past players make so, because. Counterpoint, I don't believe the salary cap's going to, going to drop. Okay. I, I think it'll stay flat. That's fair. And, and, and if you're taking that mindset, then you know, he, let's say Jones shows up and he plays football to get his $16 million in the middle of a pandemic. Makes yep. sense, right? Well, next year's tag is $19.35 million. I can pay him $20 million yeah. and reduce my cap hit Okay. It, it, over those two years. I can pay him less and backload it like I would with any other contract. So from that perspective, there is an argument for maybe the team should be a little bit more willing to do it as well. Maybe you can get him a little bit lower. But I think you can still pay Chris Jones, reduce that cap hit, and both sides end up happy because if you're the Chiefs, you want Chris Jones after to win another Super Bowl. Yeah. Like, he's awesome. He's uh, one of the best young defenders in the National yeah. Football League. So what do you guys think about this question? Will the Chiefs trade Chris Jones? If you say, yes, they are going to trade him, I want you to go down there and type T in the comment section. If you think they're going to keep him, type K for keep. But how about this? Being overachiever, if you do type that T for trade, I want you to let me know a team that you think he can get traded to. Let's talk about another player that's been in a ton of trade rumors. It's Yannick Ngakwe, and this is a new report, but it's also not really too much of a new report. 
It's Ngakwe still wants out of Jacksonville. He's threatening to sit out unless you know he's traded, and uh, not too much. Big, new. big note on this is that uh, is that my sources tell me the sun provides light. <laughs> just, just so we're clear on yeah. that one. Uh, not shocking news. Also, is still worth discussing because we're rapidly approaching the start of training camp here. Will the Jags trade him? Will they keep him? Will they call his bluff? I'm not convinced a player like Yannick or Chris Jones is going to be like, yeah, you know what? I don't know what the salary cap's going to look like in the future. L l let me pass on this 16 million, or and I think in Yannick it's almost 18 million yeah. bucks and not get paid. I think you might see him show up at some point, but he hasn't signed his tender yet. I know Chris Jones, which means they can hold out and they won't be subject to fines because technically they are not under contract. I got a special deal for everyone who's watching the show right now and then. I got a really tough question coming up, so don't go anywhere. Go to chatsports.com slash NFL 4th. 4th of July, it is right around the corner. This will be your last opportunity to go get one of these T-shirts, long sleeve shirts. If you don't get it today, your time, well, the deal, it's going to go and pass you. So if you are interested in getting your favorite team's 4th of July shirt, you got to do it right now. It'll be in the comments section. Yeah, it is in the comments section. It's also in the description, or you can remember the link. I think it's pretty easy. Jatsports.com slash NFL 4th. Deal's going on right now. Take advantage of it, because before you know it, 4th of July is going to go. So who's the more valuable player, Tom? I love this question here. I want you to type CJ, or I want you to type YN for Yannick Ngakwe, and we'll kind of debate this in the, you know, we'll debate this for a little bit. So what I wanted to do is show the last four seasons. Yeah. So the last four seasons, who do you think is the more valuable player, Yannick Ngakwe or Chris Jones? I actually go Chris Jones. Now, Yannick has been more consistent over those four seasons. Like, the production we've seen out of Yannick has been better from when he entered the NFL compared to Chris Jones. The early years favor Yannick. Chris Jones, the past two years, though, has been the better player. And if I got to pick interior pressure or exterior pressure, meaning edge guys, I'm going to take the interior. I want that penetrating nose tackle. He's not Aaron Donald, but he can get you double digit sacks from the defensive tackle spot. That's valuable. I'm going Chris Jones. All right, so I'm going to make this the pinned comment on today's video. We showed you some stats. We both talked about which players we think are valuable. So now it's your turn. Scroll on down while you're getting hit with that YouTube ad break and let us know who's the more valuable player, Chris Jones or Yannick Ngakwe. Let's talk now about Cam Newton because he could potentially win comeback player of the year. So I was watching ESPN. Ryan Clark goes on to list some of his potential favorites to win the award. In there, he announced that Cam Newton was one of his favorites. Now, obviously, he played only two games last year due to injury. But, I mean, the hype train on Cam with the Patriots, it's, it's high. I mean, we talked about on NFL Daily on Wednesday that he's top 10 in terms of not just comeback, but like winning the national, yeah, the MVP, which in yeah. my mind is mind-blowing. Now, sure, they haven't committed to him being the starter, He's going to be the starting he's, quarterback. I think he wins that He's going to be the starting I mean, quarterback. I, I think Newton as a comeback player of the year makes a lot of sense. Because we know, we know one of two things for these for these major awards, oftentimes it's a quarterback. Yep. And it needs to be on a good team. Like if the Patriots go 7-9 and nine and Newton puts up awesome numbers, he won't win. It'll probably be somebody else. So you got to have a good team or at least a team that drastically exceeds expectations. For example, like, how about the Lions and Matthew Stafford? They were horrible last year yep. because Stafford was out. If they win seven games, a, a growth of four, if they go 500, Stafford throws for, you know, 4,000 plus yards, three touchdowns, he might win the world. I actually like Stafford a lot, Mitch, as a, as a comeback player of the year option. So here are Clark's uh, comeback player of the year candidates that he listed. Mm -hmm. He had Matthew Stafford at number one. Good list. Number two was Cam Newton. Number three, A.J. Green, which I really like with, you know, Joe Burrow. Ben Roethlisberger at number four. Number five is J.J. Watt. I don't mind that one either. I don't mind that one whatsoever. I think the issue, honestly, for a guy like Stafford compared to Cam, there's going to be a lot more media coverage around Cam Newton. There's going to be a lot more people talking about Cam Newton. There's going to be a lot more people watching Cam Newton's games. I think that actually might give him a little bit more of a benefit over sure, Stafford. Sure, I, I think at some level, though, it is the NFL. It's not like college football where no one's staying up to, to watch Pac-12 after dark. Like, they'll be aware of what's going on. All right. So we want you to predict it. Who's going to win the NFL's Comeback Player of the Year? Throw it down there in the comments section. So for everyone who's watching us right now live on YouTube, watching us on Facebook as well, scroll on down and let us know who's going to win NFL Comeback Player of the Year. So Clark's two players that were on his top two, Cam Newton, Matthew Stafford. And when I looked in the comments section, those were probably the two biggest ones. So Tom, yeah. 
Who do you think is going to have the better 2020 season? I'm not talking about comeback player. I'm saying who do you think is going to have the better 2020 season, Cam Newton or Stafford? I am worried about both of those players' injuries. I don't mess around with back and neck stuff for NFL players. That's that's a bit of a red flag there. I'm still going to go Matthew Stafford, though. A, he's clearly the starter. That's a guarantee. Yep. Newton's probably the starter, but not quite 100%. I, Stafford, when he's been healthy, has been underrated across the oh, NFL. He, he was on pace to throw for like 5,000 yeah, yards so last I, year. I'm going to type in my MS. I'm actually also going to type in MS as well. So I'll go to the San Francisco 49ers, and George Kittle could uh, actually be getting paid. If you're a 49ers fan, go to YouTube.com slash 49ers TV. So there's a report out there right now that Kittle could land a contract worth north of $13 million per year. However, Tom, I actually think this is a little bit low. Yeah, I mean, it's it's higher than the, the highest paid setting, which we know is going to happen, which yes. is around $11 million with Austin Hooper. The The question was really going to be how much more than the re, than other tight ends and relative to top-end receivers does Correct. Kittle end up getting, and I think that's a fair question. I thought 15 might be the price point. Yep, Maybe same. Maybe at some level you're worried about, like, okay. We're, I was I, thinking I, five I years, 75. Now. Uh, yeah, I think that's within reason. If you can get him at 13, maybe you throw on some incentives and it's a guaranteed 13 in terms of like what he'll probably get, not including unless you your incentives. I think that makes some sense. So if you're the Niners you can get, and you can get him at 13, that's a steal. you're all over that. But that end makes me suspect maybe this report came out of San Francisco's camp and not Kittle's camp. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. I know a lot of 49ers fans wouldn't mind that either. So is George Kittle the best tight end in the National Football League? I want you to give us a Y for yes, or I want you to scroll on down and give us an N for no. Uh, me personally, I do think that Kittle is the best tight end in the league. I don't I look agree. at just the stats. I look at stats plus, you know, the fact that he can also block. So Great I'm going to say Y for yes, but I am seeing also a lot of no's. So we want you to cover up your face because, well, we're trying to stay safe out there. Go to chatsports.com slash stay safe. You can get all the deals that we're showing you today on the comments. It'll also be in the description. For a three-pack, it's $24.99. For a single face mask, it's only $14.99. For the single ones, Tom, they ship in two business days. So you'll a be couple, able to... A couple of those yes. three-packs will ship out as well, but that's a little bit more inconsistent. A little bit more inconsistent. So we're trying to be consistent here. Go to chatsports.com slash stay safe. Bottom line is I want NFL games to happen. We've already seen two preseason games get kicked. I don't want to see any regular season games get kicked. So make sure you guys are doing your part. And this is an easy way to do it, chatsports.com slash stay safe. So you saw that Buccaneers face mask. Mm -hmm. It might uh, be covering your mouth because you might be getting a little sick to your stomach, especially if you're a Buccaneers <laughs> fan. Will the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sign Antonio Brown? I want you to type AB for yes, type FAB for no, and I'm going to let you know right after this YouTube ad break. So FAB or AB, is he going to go to the Buccaneers? This one's from Michael Lombardi where he said that AB – could still sign with the Bucs now. I just, I just got to chime in. I know Thank Lombardi you. used to be an NFL GM. Look, he throws a lot of shit at the wall and hopes it's, it's so sick. bad. Like, right he now. does it a lot. And the issue with Antonio Brown is that the argument he has does make sense that they could use a number three receiver. Yes. Brady loves Antonio Brown. That's an argument. But, but. Arians already <laughs> said no. Not just once. So, <laughs> like, if Arians lied or changed his mind, sure, that's possible. The reports coming out of Tampa are also no. Correct. I get that it makes some sense, but how are you going to legitimately feed all those mouths between Howard and Brate and Gronk and Evans and, and, and Godwin and Antonio Brown? Bruce Arians' argument wasn't even that. It was a locker room thing. Yes. That's troubling to me. So, I, I get it, Lombardi. I, I get the Brady angle. I don't think it happens. I don't think it makes sense for the Bucs. If you want to find out some teams that do actually make some sense for Antonio Brown, well, yes. luckily here at Chat Sports, we have already created this video, and we do videos like this all the time. So if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please hit that sub button where you can go find videos like this, Antonio Brown Destination. But that's only part of what we do. You're watching right now for the latest news and rumors. We do this literally every single day, plus we do live shows. So if you haven't already, please hit that sub button. NFL news and rumors coming at you here by NFL Daily and Antonio Brown of the Seattle Seahawks. Before I get into it, if you're a Seattle Seahawks fan, go check out our channel, chatsports.com slash Seahawks TV. So Michael Lombardi, Tom, has been throwing a lot of crap at the walls and he's been talking a lot about Antonio mm -hmm. Brown. He mentioned two teams for AB, the Seattle Seahawks and the San Francisco 49ers. His argument was kind of like, oh, hey, you know, that could help swing the balance in the NFC West, which is a, a fair point he mentions is that 
Seattle was inches away from hosting a playoff game last Correct. year, which is fair, and I think they could use a number three receiver as well. Yeah, and I thought the quote was actually you know, pretty interesting. So this is what Lombardi had to say on the Seahawks signing AB. I think Antonio Brown shifts the balance of power in the West. I think if Seattle gets him, they become the favorite. I think if the 49ers get him, they maintain the favorite. Remember, we're six inches away from Seattle hosting a playoff game, which is 100% true. Antonio Brown would make Seattle, to me, an NFC Super Bowl contender immediately, and he sure. would ensure that the 49ers had their place, which, again, I totally agree. And if you're the Seahawks and if you're the 49ers, if Meat's saying right now, you going out and getting Antonio Brown is going to make you the best team in the NFC West, I think you at least think about it. Yeah, of course you do. It's, But that comes with a big if. It's if sure. Antonio Brown has his head on straight, which he hasn't always had. Now, Seattle could use a number three option if they finally let Russell Wilson throw it Please. full time. <laughs> Lockett, Metcalf, love that one-two punch. Antonio Brown, man, that's that's appetizing. It is absolutely appetizing. The only other issue is there's another free agent wide receiver in Josh Gordon. I think Pete Carroll would actually have a little bit more confidence in going out and getting Josh Gordon. Now, if you haven't already, please give us a like. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you do. Question, would you want your favorite team to sign Antonio Brown? Give us a one for yes or I want you to type two for no. So right now you guys are watching NFL Daily. No. We're doing our live show, and Tom, you're typing no. I'm typing no. I don't. I don't think it makes much sense. No? I, I just. I, I don't want to deal with that right now. He's. He's a little bit too much.